In this exercise, you can learn to animate a background layer on your canvas. That will be animated independently of all the other things going on. And this is the finished product of what you'll be learning to render. And keep in mind that my video tutorial frame rate might make the animation appear choppy. This is an animation that you want to evaluate yourself on your own computer. Now we're going to start with the code structure that we left off with from our animation tutorial. Now I've got this canvas in a canvas container which is a div down here in my HTML. You can see it has an ID of canvas container and my canvas is nested within it. And I've centered that container in the page so you can see what I get. So if I run this in the browser you can see that I get a centered white canvas that's a thousand pixels wide and 500 high. Now my goal is to animate and loop a background image within the canvas. It's very important to create a background image that tiles correctly. So I'll show you how to do that very quickly. And you notice that my canvas was 1000 pixels wide. I'll create a new fireworks document or you can be in Photoshop or whatever kind of graphics editing tool you use. Just make sure you set it to 1500 wide and 500 high. OK. Now the first thing I'll do is set my canvas to black. Then I'm going to draw out a rectangle that's 500 by 500. And I'm going to give it a stroke of one pixel white and I'm going to remove the fill. Now I'm going to grab my paintbrush and I'll set this to somewhere around four pixels and I'll just start dabbing in stars in random places. And you can change the size to make some smaller ones in there. So once you finish drawing, you're going to be left with a bitmap. So let's take that bitmap and this rectangle that it's in, and we're going to group those. I'm going to say Control C, Control V, and I'm going to drag this next one over to the 0Y and 500X position. Then I'll press Control C, Control V, and this next one goes at the 1000X position. Now we can ungroup those. Control Shift G. This one, Control Shift G. Ungroup this one too, Control Shift G. Now down at the bottom, just highlight your rectangles with the white stroke and turn them black. And the reason why we put those in place is so we can evenly tile these stars through there. Now once you have that all set up, you go to File, Export Wizard, Continue, Continue exit and then you're gonna select JPEG or whatever file type you want to select and then export to your computer I saved mine as stars.jpg Now you can save this file if you need to adjust it later so the first thing we'll do in our script is we're gonna get a variable set up for the background image bar BG is equal to new image object in JavaScript then we just say bg.source is equal to our stars.jpg now above and outside of our animate function, we're going to create a new constructor for our background object. So we'll type in function, background, open, close parentheses, open in curly brace, and close in curly brace. Now we're going to set some properties and then one method. So the first we need some properties representing the background's x position. Make that equal to zero. This dot y position is going to be equal to zero. This dot width is going to be equal to our bg image object dot width and then this dot height is equal to bg dot height now we're going to create the render method for this background object so we'll say this dot render is equal to function open close parentheses open in curly brace and close in curly brace now what we're going to do is say ctx dot draw image we're using the draw image method and the image resource is bg that's the first parameter. The second parameter is the x position of the image. We're going to type in this dot x minus minus. That way the x position is always decrementing. It's going to start at zero and then it's going to decrement. Then the next parameter is the y position of where we want that image drawn. And that's how we get the animated effect is we animate the background x property. And you can go either direction you want. You can increment or decrement to specify direction. 
Now the last little bit of logic we need within this method is an if condition that says if this background's x position is less than or equal to negative 499 because eventually it will get there as it decrements down. It starts at zero, then it decrements. And eventually it'll get to negative 499. And if that happens, you simply want to say this dot x is equal to zero. It starts the position back to zero again. So the animated background will be seamless and the viewer won't be able to realize exactly what's happening. It'll just seem like one continuous long animated background. And once you have your background object all programmed, then we're going to create a new instance of that background object. We'll say var background equal to new background. And then down in our drawing area, in our animate function, we're going to take our background instance, control C, put it right here, and say background dot render. And we'll call the render method for that background. So let's see what that gives us. Nice. A beautiful animated background and if it seems choppy that's just because my video tutorial frame rate is set very low so what if you wanted it to go faster you can say this dot X minus equals 3 because if we use just minus minus that'll decrement it by 1 each time if you want to decrement by 3 each time you can say minus equals 3 and now you'll see that you get a much faster moving background so basically the background starts at a 0x and 0y position and it slowly moves to the left. And once it gets to negative 499x, it just gets set back to 0. Now you can draw many more things and it will be independent of your animated background. Here, let's put that back on decrementing by 1. And down here in our animate function, you can draw many more things to the canvas. So I'll say ctx.fillstyle equal to orange and ctx fill rect. I'll put a rectangle at 100x, 100y, and I'll make it 50 pixels wide and 50 pixels high. Let's see what that gives us. So you see? And this object, or any other assets that you have in your canvas, can be animated or controlled in different directions and different speeds. And your background layer will be just doing its own thing independently behind everything else.